Data of every description will pervade our consciousness. Holograms projected beneath our eyelids. Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi and welcome back at the museum. As the year 2022 ends, we mark the 30th anniversary of DCC. We've been working secretly on a project that is really the biggest thing that might have happened to DCC in the past 30 years. We have done several videos showing you the read-write board and the problems about leaking capacitors and how this eventually always affects the read-write boards. Sometimes we are able to restore it, but a lot of times the problems come back because the leaking acid of these capacitors in the end will keep destroying those boards. We got together with Jeroen Fortanier of the company Soundtraces in the Netherlands, and he was able to totally recreate a new read-write board. Not only is this a recreation of the read-write board version 2.0, it actually has some enhancement, making it more plug and play. He was able to remove four variable resistors on the analog side, so it's that part is sort of auto-detect. And in this video, we're going to show you how easy it now is to replace a read-write board. And we're going to do this on a Technics RSDC10. And we're going to take you on this journey. We're very excited about this. So tag along. So here are the basic beginnings where we see the back of the mechanism, including a read-write board that is unrestored, mimicked over here. The read-write board has a read and a write amplifier, of course. It will then be used with a flat cable connecting to a PZ03, which is the audio board that would still need recapping. But the main issue is here on the read-write board. If we turn this around, we'll see that all of these SMD capacitors eventually will start leaking and will start affecting the traces around it potentially the components, but the worst that can happen is that the acid is leaking in the side A to side B connections. And not only do we now know that there is a side A and B, there is also a middle layer, which is only used for ground. Jeroen Fortenier of the company Soundphrases was able to redesign this board, which was hard because the technical specs did not entirely match the layout of this board. So he had to go back and forth to redesign it. Once he had that working, he was able to get all of the components new. The only thing that we have to reuse is actually the TDA 1316 and 1317. TDA 1316 is the right amplifier and the TDA 1317 is the read amplifier. So here are the boards next to one another with the connector and the TDA that has already been moved over. The interesting part on version 2.0 is that Jeroen was able to redesign this part. This part has four variable resistors that is used for analog playback. And by looking at the design of a later generation, the third generation 951 or 730, where the read-write amplifier has sort of an automated part where there are no variable resistors, he was able to mimic this on a new design. So therefore, there are fewer settings that we need to do in order to make the new read-write board work. So what is left are two variable resistors that are used for recording, but in a general setting, they will always work out of the box. It's just sometimes you have to tweak it a little bit by copying the values of these resistors over to that one. The good news is that the analog playback, not that we use that very often or actually discourage people from using it, but analog playback is substantially better on the new board. In order to show you why the new read-write board will perform better in any first generation player, we present you with this graph. It has three lines. One of them is the yellow reference player, the Nakamichi LX3. The blue line is the DCC900 with the original read-write board where you can clearly see 
that the mid is lacking and there is too much high. And then after the frequency equalization done on the new read write board, we present the purple line, which is the DCC 900 using the new read write board and is much closer to the reference player Nakamichi LX3. So now we connected the new read write board to the audio board. So once we put the tape in, it plays perfectly. We use tantalium capacitors. There will not be any leakage in the future. So other than now, you know, recap the uh, PZ03 belts and pinch rollers, this machine is good to go. So now we hope you understand why we're so excited to end 2022 on a high note, marking the 30th anniversary of Digital Compact Cassette with the gift to the DCC community with this new read write board. All the repairable read write boards will immediately be used to use the existing TDAs that are on that board and use them on a new board. So we will no longer be restoring the old boards. We will immediately start using the new boards. This is a service we will exclusively do for Patreons. Uh, also, we will be offering the service in the United States, but also in the Netherlands. So that is something new. So all in all, pretty exciting news. Check out the website. If you're not a Patreon, please support us in our journey to keep Digital Compact Cassette alive. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Thank you.